Testing, one, two. Okay, let's get started. So we're here to um, talk about um, automatic backup and recovery solutions for, for OpenStack, primarily focusing on Triple O, but a lot of the same concepts could be used for other OpenStack environments. So my name's Dan, this is Carlos. Um, this is our first time presenting as well, so this is very exciting for the both of us. Um, so let's get started. So this is just a very rough agenda of what we're going to be talking about. Um, and to give a bit of an inf uh, introduction to how Carlos and I met, uh, it was about a year ago, I think September last year, um, that we met during a fast forward upgrade meetup uh, in Madrid. Um, we were working on documenting as part of the fast forward upgrade process, uh, a backup and restore uh, process to be able to take a snapshot of an OSP 10 environment before upgrading to um, an OSP 13 environment. And documenting it, um, both the backup and restore, can uh, introduce several points of failure. And not only that, it's quite a uh, time staking process as well. Um, it usually sort of takes a lot. So ever since then, Carlos and I have been working out ways to, to automate um, the backup and restore process. Um, and I'm gonna hand over to, to Carlos now to talk a bit about our strategy and sort of like what we're actually trying to achieve, so. Okay, oh, first of all, thank you all for being here today. Uh, well, yeah, we actually met together in a uh, meetup about how to run a fast photo upgrade to get our OSP 10 environment to OSP 13, and well, uh, basically the issue we were trying to solve there, it's like, okay, we are exercising how to run the FFU, and we kind of usually were breaking the environment, and we were saying like, ah, we need to redeploy again. Ah, we were investing a lot of time doing something that, well, we can actually, we were able to uh, do a rollback and start over start over to um, like exercise again the FFU. So uh, basically the problem we were facing is that we were breaking the environment and we wanted to recover as soon as possible. We wanted to document it and we wanted to provide this uh, knowledge we were creating to our customers. Uh, first of all, there are a lot of ways to run the uh, actual uh, backup and restore we are kind of exercising one uh, of these uh, possibilities. So, yeah. Uh, when we speak about like backups and restore, we, are, we, we can speak about different categories of running this backup and this restore, right? We can backup actually the user workload, like we are going to uh, backup our, all our Nova tenants. Uh, but in this case, we are not going to do that. We are going to back up all our, uh, let's call them backend services or the control plane services uh, for avoiding the risk of breaking our controllers. For example, we are, run we are running a really, really sensitive operation in our cloud, which is running an upgrade. We break the environment we break our cloud and we want to roll back. So basically what we do is to take the things we need to uh, restore our environment, which is basically config files and databases, which is the most important things we actually uh, back up. Um, the goal here is, well, uh, ensure we can actually restore an under cloud and the over cloud controllers no matter what, and try to do that automatically. <coughs> Why we do like, try to make it uh, like automatically because uh, the thing is that if we are able to create a, an under cloud backup, for example, you can run a snapshot or you can make a dump of your databases, but what if you don't have any more the under cloud? So you won't have like a, an automated way of restoring it because you don't have any more this under cloud uh, node. Even if, for example, you have a virtual machine or a bare metal node. Okay, so now um, Dan is going to speak about the strategies we use to uh, back up all the uh, individual services. 
So we're looking at a couple of key services here, and we're going to try and be as comprehensive as possible. We can't go too far in detail, mainly because time limits us. Um, but we're looking at the main services. So we're talking about mainly uh, database services, um, object store services, um, file system and configuration. So mainly for a lot of the core services. So to start off with, um, looking at uh, a MariaDB database in a non-HA environment. Um, so for example, um, when you're back up, doing a backup and restore of the undercloud, uh, it's just a standalone database. Um, and backing it up is quite simple. It's just running the, the MySQL dump command. And then to restore, it's just a matter of creating a new database, uh, starting up MariaDB, uh, increase the packet size because that's a, quite a large dump, and then restoring the data from the SQL file that you dumped. Uh, but for the overcloud, it gets a bit more complex because you're dealing with several um, HA nodes that are working together. So in this case, we're talking about uh, a Galeric cluster uh, being managed by Pacemaker. Um, so in this case, what you do is you select an idle node. Um, but you identify a node that's not currently being used. Um, or whichever is the, the main node that's being used at the moment for uh, your OpenStack environment. Um, and then backing up the database, backing up the grants, and then moving that to a secure location. And then to restore, there's a process where um, it gets a bit complicated where you have to disable the VIP access to the database completely um, so that you get no incoming communications while you're trying to do the restore um, to stop Galera to temporarily, uh, temporarily disable the replication um, of that because what you're going to be doing is creating a new database on each node and synchronizing it together, um, and also setting database uh, permissions for each node, um, for each uh, uh, MySQL uh, MariaDB replication, um, and therefore both the root and the cluster check user. Uh, and then synchronize the nodes, so bring them up, and making sure that they're all talking to each other and replicating. Um, restart Galera, and then import the database and the grants, and then restore VIP access there. Um, we've actually got this documented upstream as well on, on how to do this. Um, for MongoDB, so this is used for telemetry storage in Neutron. Um, beyond that, um, it's now moved to uh, Noki, so, but just in case, this is something that we sort of had to do for OSP10 because uh, that's based on Neutron. Um, and that's quite simple, it's just a matter of Mongo dump and Mongo restore, and there's links to the documentation on how to do that as well. Uh, for Redis, uh, it's used as an object store for services. Uh, for triple O over clouds, uh, we use it for some telemetry object storage. Um, and it's quite simple and quite versatile in how um, you can back it up. It's just a matter of saving the current state, and it stores as a dump RDB file, and it's just a matter of copying that file to a secure location. Um, and to do this restore, it's mainly just stopping the service, copying the dump RDB file back to um, its original location, and then restarting the service. For Pacemaker now, this is something that we've um, been testing in the last uh, couple of weeks, um, being able as part of the fast forward upgrade process. It's something that we've discovered. And when you go from OSP 10 to OSP 13, the Pacemaker configuration changes because originally OSP 10 is using systemd services, OSP 13 is using containerized services, and the configuration uh, and Pacemaker changes to reflect that as well. A lot of the resources change. Um, so to do a, a dump of the configuration, it's just a matter of uh, using the, the backup command. So PCS config backup, and then the name of um, an archive uh, that uh, the, the command generates. Um, so in this case, Pacemaker underscore backup. So yeah, that generates an archive, and then it's just a matter of stopping the cluster restoring the config using PCS config restore and then the name of the archive file, and then starting the cluster back up again. For Swift, now Swift, as you know, it's an object, uh, uses object data and stores as files, and usually you back this up as part of the whole file system um, backup. Um, so 
normally they're stored in SRV node. Um, probably the key thing, and this is something that we learnt early on when backing up Swift, is that you've got to include the X attributes uh, of the files, um, or otherwise you lose the metadata on that, and then the, the Swift um, store basically, the Swift data basically becomes um, useless. Um, and I've asked Swift developers about this, if there's any way to restore that metadata, it doesn't really seem to be. Um, so yeah, it's quite important if you ever say doing an archive of the Swift data to include the X, attrib uh, X attributes um, option there, and same with if you're doing an rsync as well. So something that's vitally important. Um, but in terms of restoring, it's basically the, the same process there. So restoring back to the same location. Um, also backing up and restoring the, the ring files and the configuration for Swift as well. Uh, for the file system backup, what you want to do is back up any relevant directories uh, to your OpenStack environment. So this depends on your OpenStack environment itself and what you've got installed. Um, so everybody's OpenStack environment is different. They've got different services enabled. Um, so normally uh, you'd back up Etsy because that has your main configuration there. Um, Varlib and whatever services that you are running, so Nova, Cinder, Glance, Heat. Um, if you're using containerized, um, a containerized environment, so for example, Col, it's a good idea to keep the, the Col config backed up, um, so that way you can retain it and restore it um, if you're running a containerized environment. Um, I mentioned before, SRV node for Swift, so don't forget the X, X attributes there. Um, also the log files, the root directory, because that usually contains the uh, root access for um, accessing the database. Not always. I think for the containerized for Cola environments, it stores within the actual um, config um, data directory there for Cola. Um, and also your cloud admin users. So for the under cloud, home stack or whatever user that you use. And for the over, over cloud, it's usually heat admin. So now I'm going to switch back to Carlos, and he's going to talk about um, his work on uh, performing under cloud backup and restore and automating that as well. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to speak about now is the, the status we have currently for running a backup of the under cloud because we have it partially automated from starting from Queens. So uh, there are, as we said before, th there is no one single solution to actually do the backup and the restore. There are many ways to do it. So, for example, for the specific use case of the under cloud, if you have your under cloud in a virtual machine, it will be really, really easy to create a snapshot of the virtual machine, and that's basically it. Uh, you don't need to do anything else. You just restore the snapshot, and you should be uh, OK again. So if you have a bare metal node, uh, yeah, it's different, because you might not be able to create a snapshot, because there is no uh, virtual machine. Let's assume you don't have a way to like um, uh, back up or create a snapshot of the volume in which is like installed on your cloud. So we are kind of taking uh, the worst case scenario, imagine that someone got into our data center and they stole the under cloud node, they run away, and we don't have it anymore. So what we're going to do is to uh, reinstall the under cloud from scratch using, using um, the data we have from the backup. So uh, we have it partially automated. So if we are in uh, starting from Queens, we have a new uh, CLI option if you're using Triple O. So you can actually execute open stack under cloud backups from your under cloud and it will create this database dump. It will create all the file system backup and it will store this in a tarball in a Swift container uh, called uh, under cloud backups with a timestamp of the date you have created the, the backup. Um, how this works. So what we did was to create a new CLI option uh, this is living in the Python triple O client. Then we have created a few, one actual um, Mistral workflow with all the tasks required to run the under cloud backup. Uh, we, are, we are also uh, doing a few checks like, okay, is it your under cloud kind of um, 
Does your undercloud have enough space to uh, store the backup you're creating? Uh, for example, uh, where is it possible? I mean, we check if the backup was created correctly. And uh, we create this using Mistral workflows because we want to eventually in the future integrate this to our um, UI. So theoretically, if we have an operator, he will be able to create the backup from the UI di directly, not needing to you know, log into the terminal and run uh, OpenStack under cloud backup. If we have a kind of uh, an older version, what we did was to document all the steps required, which are uh, fairly simple. For example, uh, we can execute OpenStack under cloud backup with the options there. So by default, we will create the uh, MySQL dump, and you can add path or exclude path. For example, uh, by default, we include the the, the home uh, directory directory of the stack user, but sometimes the operator might have there are a lot of things that they don't want to back up, so they can ex exclude that directory. Um, here you have the options. We usually run the, the backup by default. We back up the, the root folder, all the config files. We back up Swift data. And sometimes we exclude the, the stack home uh, directory. Um, if, you don't, if you have an older version, what we do is basically to run the MySQL dump uh, manually. And we create a uh, tar file with all the uh, files we need to back up. OK, so we have uh, a few strategies here. What can we do to uh, be sure we can actually restore our undercloud? So we assume the worst case scenario. So uh, we restore the snapshot uh, or nuke the node and install from scratch. In this case, we assume we need to install from scratch, and the documentation is already um, available upstream. If, if you want to check it and um, push fix, fixes, you are very, very welcome. Um, reasons, yeah. Uh, the use case we are exer exercising here, it's a fast forward trade. So uh, sometimes it might not be easy to roll back this uh, FFU because the, the June's uh, transaction history might be uh, tricky to roll back. You might have packages dependencies that will that might end up breaking completely the node. So we assume the worst, and we reinstall from scratch. And this is really easy because in your under cloud right now we don't have any HA, so it's very easy to reinstall. How to do it? So very easy. We restore the config files. We restore the certificate files. We restore the databases. And once we have these three things in place, we just run an OpenStack under cloud install. And we should have it, uh, once it's finished, uh, back and up and running. OK. Uh, so right now, uh, I will hand it over to Dan, because we are, we are going to actually exercise a over cloud backup and restore. OK, so the overclub backup and restore, um, just to give a bit of context as well, um, originally what I did with um, sort of like the inspiration for uh, the overclub backup and restore is I was showing actually one of our consultants who I think is in the audience, uh, Darren Sorrentino. There he is. Um, I showed him the docs for our backup and restore process, and um, his response was, yeah, this is great, but why not turn it into an Ansible playbook? And I sort of thought and went, yeah, why don't I? Um, so I've got to give credit to Darren for, for spurring me down this path. Um, so the goal here uh, is to try and create something that's composable and agnostic um, to automatically back up and restore an overcloud. Um, and originally, I developed a playbook to, to do this. It was a monolithic playbook. Um, it was suggested by some of the uh, OpenStack devs to uh, integrate to uh, this role that we've got here. So Ansible role, OpenStack operations is the um, location on um, the, the Git review on OpenStack.org. Um, and I've developed some foundational tasks within that role um, that's currently under review at the moment. Um, we're currently testing it to make sure that it fits um, all use cases that we're exploring. Um, but it does a couple of things. So 
for a start, it allows you to set an external backup server and automatically configure it. So originally, I had it backing up to the undercloud. That doesn't suit most use cases. Most people would have an external backup server that they'd be um, uh, backing up their data to. Um, another thing that it does is it does bootstrap node assignment as well. So if you have a cluster of um, database nodes, a cluster of controller nodes, um, it selects one to do certain operations as well, so certain uh, pacemaker tasks, for example. Um, a lot of the tasks um, are built, or the task files uh, incorporate the Ansible Synchronize module, which is an rsync wrapper. Um, and it does delegation between the external backup server of your choice and um, the, the overcloud nodes as well. Uh, and also provides temporary SSH access to the nodes as well, which is required for that delegation. It can be kind of fiddly to, to work. It took me a, a couple of tries to be able to get it to properly delegate, um, to sort of work out the, the delegation path. Um, but it provides um, SSH access to the nodes and also disables SSH access uh, from the backup server to the nodes after you've finished doing your backup. And I've created some foundational tasks for the database backup um, and the database restore only for containerized HA at the moment, so testing it out on OSP 13. And then also um, some tasks to validate the database as well. And what I aim to do is also include uh, more services um, within this as well, so to be able to back up Pacemaker, uh, Redis, uh, Swift, and everything else, and also to back up uh, different back-end architectures. So your non-HA environments, your non-containerized environments so that it can incorporate some legacy um, clouds as well. Uh, this is an example of a playbook that calls that role um, and pulls the tasks from it. So as you can see here, it's mainly just five tasks that's pulling from. Um, so this is the backup playbook. So the first task, initializing the backup host. What that does is it sets up, makes sure that the backup host has um, an uh, SSH certificate installed, um, and also make sure that rsync is installed on the backup host as well. Um, then it validates Galera just to make sure that it, it's all in sync, uh, enables SSH, backs up uh, MySQL, and then disables SSH. Um, the restoring the overclad playbook is kind of similar. Um, as you can see, we've got the uh, OpenStack operations role. We've got the initialized backup host. Um, here you can see we set the bootstrap, um, enable SSH, restore the, the database, disable SSH, and then validate the database to make sure that everything is in sync. Um, also worth mentioning as well is um, how I've uh, pulled the hosts from here. So from your inventory file, usually you'd have uh, one host as um, your backup, uh, your external backup host, and then you'd have the controller nodes. Um, I'm using for the default there um, for the backup host, I'm using as a default backup as the, the host group, and then for the, um, uh, the, the controller nodes or the database nodes, uh, MySQL as the default there. Um, I'm only doing it this for one node um, on uh, the backup because I only need to perform these tasks on one node. Uh, but for the restore, I've got to incorporate all because there's some pacemaker um, set up and also database set up for uh, initialization for all the controller nodes when you're restoring the database. And let's give a demo. Now, I just want to clarify, this is a live demo. Anything can go wrong. So. <laughs> Okay, so to show you what I'm working with here, I've got an overcloud deployed that contains five nodes, so three controllers, one compute, and I've also created a role for backup nodes as well, so I've got one backup node there, and that's the node that I'm going to be uh, backing up uh, my database data to. Um, so this is all managed within Triple O, and this is basically just a generic uh, node deployed. The only thing that I've really done is enabled subscriptions to it and installed rsync onto it, um, which the playbooks do anyway. Um, so it's no extra composable services, it's just a, a generic node. Now I've got here uh, a couple of scripts. 
Um, and backup.yaml and restore.yaml are the playbooks that I'm using that you saw before. So let's start by backing up the database. So as you can see, it's doing the backup server initialization. It's allowing temporary SSH access. Now it's actually doing the backup and copying it to the backup server and removing temporary SSH access. Um, just to show you that file as well, that, I, that script that I ran, all it is is just the Ansible playbook command. I'm using the dynamic inventory script that's included with triple O, so that pulls the, um, the, the host groups in there, and I've, I haven't really done much in terms of um, changing things. It uses the default host groups there as well. Um, and I've also set the backup hosts here. This is an environment variable to, to set which uh, host group uh, for delegation purposes. Um, and I've also got uh, a backup directory, and so I've made this customizable so that you can specify, say, for example, a date. So if you want to do daily backups, um, you could say set uh, your backup directory to be based upon date, and that way you can have a daily backup there. Um, and the only other thing you hear is um, dash m, which isn't actually used by the backup. It's actually used by um, the restore. I've included um, the Ansible modules directory because that includes um, the pacemaker, the Ansible pacemaker. Uh, modules that are installed as a part of uh, the, the underclad here. So this is sort of a requirement because it does pacemaker management as well. Okay, so just to sort of show you on the backup server, so I've saved to a directory called backup test. And all it is is just a, a tar file containing the database and the grants, so the, the dumps from MySQL on the overcloud just using one of the nodes. Now, to sort of simulate data corruption. I've got a script here called data corruption. And basically what it does is it just adds a couple of uh, OpenStack users to the overcloud um, that are just gibberish, basically, just to simulate data corruption. Yep, so as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of randomized users there, and I've got randomized passwords. I don't want them there, so I'm going to do my restore. So using that playbook, I've got a script here that calls that here, and as you can see, it does a very similar, in fact, it does pretty much the same options as the backup script. Um, so let's restore the database. So it's doing the initialization of the backup host. Okay, it's set the bootstrap status. So as you can see, for some tasks, uh, they're only performing for one node. So that's the bootstrap node. So in this case, it's overcloud controller zero. Uh, now it's shutting down Galera. So if I go to the controller node, you can see that it's starting to disable for the, um, the container, the MariaDB container there. So it's demoting HA proxies reported that the database is offline. Yep, so it's stopped on two nodes. So I'll jump back to the, the undercloud, and this should continue on. Sorry? Cal -say. Cal -say. Oh, yes. <laughs> OK, so now it's um, copying the corrupted MySQL database. And it's creating a container based upon the same container that was running Galera. So um, it's using that same, uh, that same container to create the database and to initialize it. And the reason why I'm doing it through container, uh, a containerized approach is mainly for user permissions purposes because um, the container uses different user permissions to what's actually on the host. OK, so now that we've initialized the new database, we re-enable Galera. 
Yep, so you can see that it's starting on the nodes, so it started on zero. Starting on one. And starting on two. And now it'll promote to master four of them, making sure they're all in sync. That's okay, that's because it's starting to be in sync. Yep, so the final nodes promoting to master. Okay, checks the database is active. Now it starts importing the, the data into there. Um, and I'll just check to see, I don't think I've got the, the MySQL config here, but if I go to the, um, oops, puppet generated. seem to be there. That's okay. I was going to show the data actually being restored in MySQL. Um, usually this takes around about a minute or two. Um, does anybody have any questions while this is inactive? Oh, this is active, sorry. Yep, feel free to come up to the mic, take a question while this is restoring. Do you support any encryptions in your, in your scripts or like GPG configuration so that the backup can be automatically encrypted? Not yet. Um, probably the only encryption that we're using because it's rsync, because it's SSH based, it basically just playing SSH at the moment. Um, but I mean, that's something that, yeah, we can look at as well. Cool, did anybody else have a question? I was wondering specifically if you have, uh, when you were talking about restoring the undercloud, uh, do you support some kind of, when you have like a, let's say you have a physical undercloud and it, the hardware breaks and then you have a, a blank server basically setting up uh, from, from the backup? Because yes, so you said like restore the database, but how you do, we don't have a database to restore to. Yeah, I mean, that's what we are actually assuming. We assume that we don't have any more the, the, the physical node to like reuse it, so we reinstall it from scratch. So uh, you just move the damaged node to another place, you plug a new one, and you use the backup you have to reinstall it from scratch. The thing is that we have everything. We have the config files, we have the, the NIC configurations, we have the database, so we have all the resources we need to restart it from okay, scratch. Okay, I thought you were talking about like, like a rollback, but yours is, is, is a restore. Yeah. Okay. yeah, when we speak about the overcloud uh, controller nodes, we uh, actually roll back them. But with the undercloud, it's different because it's very okay. simple to reinstall it from scratch. Okay. So that's what we are doing. Probably the only other thing to add to as well is that the hardware configuration has to be, or at least, for example, yeah. the network configuration has to be same as the, the corrupted under cloud as well, so it has to sort of match there, um, or otherwise it can you can't communicate to your over cloud. So that's probably the only uh, proviso there. Um, so I'll take some more questions uh, at the end, or just because this is finished. So um, as you can see, um, we've removed the temporary SSH access and it's finished um, with the the backup restore. 
Um, and it's also checked that the, the, Galera, cl the Galera cluster is synced. Um, and if I go to the overcloud, the data corruption is gone. Um, so yeah, so that shows just a basic demo, uh, kind of a proof of concept We're using uh, MySQL and Galera, mainly because that, that's probably the, the most complicated and time consuming. Normally for a backup and restore um, in a database, you can, manually it can take, say, an hour or two. With this, um, I timed it. It's 30 seconds for the, um, the backup and five minutes um, thereabouts for the restore. So it can be a pretty big time saver there. And not only that, as I said before, you can have it automated um, on a daily basis and do daily snapshots of your, your database there. Um, back to the slides. Um, so one thing that we should talk about, did you want to talk about user workloads or should I? Okay, um, so in terms of user workloads, so we, we sort of touched on this previously, that we're sort of focusing on the, the control plane um, and the, the, the back-end services. If you're looking for a user workload uh, solution, I mean, there's a couple of different solutions out there at the moment. Just to mention um, two here, so I mean, one that's uh, a commercial and one that's uh, an open source, so Trilio. Um, which can do uh, backups of your workloads and also configuration as well. Um, and Freezer, I haven't used. Have you used Freezer before? Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, the use cases should be similar. So uh, we have solutions to do disaster recovery. We, what we're doing right now is to provide a solution to make uh, like a quick fix for uh, when something goes wrong. But if you want to like exercise doing correctly all the, the disaster recovery, uh, you should probably use one of these uh, tools. Yeah. yeah. And also Trilio um, can be installed using Directory as well and acts as a, a Horizon plugin plug as well for that too. So, and it's quite easy to use um, to be able to, to back up your workloads there. Um, some of the challenges that we face, so testing, uh, has been a bit of a challenge because there's always things that we, we can miss in this. Like for example, um, we had tested uh, the, the undercloud backup, um, but we didn't backup including the X attributes. So uh, that caused issues and we tested so that it got up to the point where it reinstalled and we tested some services. But when it came time to, to use something that was Swift based, which the undercloud is it, it stores its plans, um, the, the triple heat templates in Swift. Um, when it came time to access those, we couldn't because there was no metadata there, um, and Swift would quarantine the object uh, for the file that you try to access. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, another challenge, adapting the tasks uh, for different versions and services. So this is something that we found out um, from the fast forward upgrade from 10 to 13, it's quite a big change because you've got some components that are deprecated. Um, you've also got uh, different data formats as well. Like for example, um, with uh, uh, Redis, um, I think it uses one version, then it upgrades the version. So um, that tends to, to get missed as well. So when we tried to roll back, um, we were still using the latest version. We had to roll back to the, the previous version as well. Um, and also maintaining backup solution over new releases as well because there's things that um, are impossible to, to sort of tell um, with any new, say, new project, um, any new service, and existing service as well. There can be things that happen. So, for example, the telemetry services um, change dramatically from OSP 10 to 13. So um, who knows what could happen in the future? So it's the sort of thing where we've got to try and anticipate what's happening um, and come up with a backup solution for that. And ideas? Yeah, uh, for example, one simple, very, very simple example, it's that, for example, in uh, OpenStack Queens, we, doesn't, we don't have uh, containers in the undercloud, uh, and we are actually basing this backup solution for a non-containerized undercloud now. 
uh, for sure it will be broken because right now we have containers in the undercloud, but we are not running the backup accordingly. So uh, it takes a lot of work to maintain all the different releases, all the different versions, all the different uh, possible scenarios that operators can do. So uh, that's a really, really big challenge. So we have a few ideas. Uh, for example, we want to create something like we can call like composable backups. We can. Uh, we have, for example, in triple heat templates, we have a section uh, when, uh, where we define the create task for each service, so we can actually use the same templates per service to define a, the backup task we want to run for each uh, different service. Uh, we don't actually have an official place for the, the the control plane backup workflows, so we should probably find a, a, an official place to put this information available for all the community. Um, we also need the help from all their squads uh, in the upstream community because uh, we are actually not experts in all the different services that we can actually back up. So it's something that uh, requires a lot of collabor co collaboration between uh, the different uh, teams. Um, and we don't have a CLI option to run the uh, backups of the overcloud controllers, so it might be a good idea if there are any uh, collaborators that want to help with this effort, it's uh, pretty much welcome. Uh, we can create sort of things like, for example, uh, an option, a new CLI option called uh, open stack overcloud backup minus minus controllers, and we will back up all the information needed to actually restore the controllers if something goes wrong. Um, and another thing that we don't have, and uh, triple UI, we don't, uh, we can uh, actually call the the undercloud backup from the UI because it's in a Mistral workflow. That's basically the reason we encapsulated the, the undercloud backup in a Mistral workflow to be able to call it from the UI. But it it's, it doesn't exist yet. So uh, would be nice is, uh, if people wants to help with this. And I think this is all. Thank you for coming. And uh, well, if you have any questions, we are here for you, uh, either here or outside in the hall. Thank you.